Welcome to another video on polysaccharides. In this video, we're going to be talking about polysaccharides. Now, in the previous video, we met amylose, amylopectin, which both make starch, and glycogen, which is found in animals. Now, although these are all different polysaccharides, they have one thing in common. They are all chains of alpha glucose. So how is it that alpha glucose can form different types of polysaccharides? To do that, let's first of all look at the structure of each of these individually. We'll start with amylose. So as we said, amylose is just a straight chain of alpha glucose. Now you might think, okay, if it's a straight chain, how come it's coiling up? Now that coiling is due to a special intermolecular force between the glucose molecules known as hydrogen bonds. We're going to look at hydrogen bonds in detail in a separate video. Moving on, amylopectin looks quite similar to amylose, except it has branches. And glycogen looks very similar to amylopectin, except it has way more branches, and the branches are shorter. Okay, so let's talk about what causes branches to occur. So right now, here we have a straight chain of alpha glucose molecules joined together by... 1, 4 glycosidic bonds between carbons number 1 and 4. So this is a straight chain. There are no branches visible right now. What causes the branches? Well, if you remember, we said that in glucose, there are three important carbons, number 1, number 4, and number 6. And it's number 6 that's going to be helpful when forming branches. So if you look at this alpha glucose, we're going to highlight the OH on carbon number 6. So let's say that we have another alpha glucose coming along. So carbon number one and carbon number six are going to join together and form a bond. This is a 1,6 glycosidic bond. The rest of the chain, if it's a straight chain, it will just be 1,4 glycosidic bonds. So remember, 1,4 makes a straight chain. 1,6 makes the branch point and only the point, and the rest of the chain will still be 1,4. Okay, so let's look at amylopectin and glycogen and compare some similarities. First of all, they both have 1,4 glycosidic bonds. This is responsible for making the straight chain. They also have 1,6 glycosidic bonds, which are found at the branch points. Of course, glycogen has way more branches, so it has much more 1,6 glycosidic bonds. Also, they are both made of only alpha glucose. Now, amylopectin is found in plants and it makes a component of starch. And glycogen is found in animals. So, if they're both simply stores of alpha glucose, how come they have different structures? Well, it's all to do with which one releases glucose faster. And that's very important when it comes to biology and survival. Okay, so to understand that, let's compare amylopectin and amylose. These are both polysaccharides which eventually get broken down back into alpha glucose. Now, there are two types of enzymes which digest polysaccharides. The first one only breaks down from the ends of the molecule. So this breaks down 1,4 glycosidic bonds. Since amylopectin has branches, we can have four enzymes working on it. Amylose does not have any branches, so it only has two enzymes working at the same time. However, the second type of enzyme, B, breaks down the branch points, so the 1,6 bonds. Amylopectin, therefore, will be further broken down. So, as we can see, amylose, which had no branches, is still going to have two enzymes working on it. However, this time, because the branches were broken off amylopectin, we can have six enzymes working on it. So glycogen is simply amylopectin, but way more branched. So that means because there are more branches, it's going to be hydrolyzed faster. Now, why is that important for animals? Well, animals are more active, which means that they have a higher metabolic rate than plants because they're moving around. When's the last time a plant beat an animal in a 100 meter sprint? Never. Okay, so because they have a higher metabolic rate, that means they need a rapid glucose supply. So it makes sense that glycogen is much more branched, so it can break down faster and give a rapid glucose supply to the animal. Some final points between starch and glycogen. Both polysaccharides are insoluble. 
This means that it does not lower the water potential of the cell. So this does, so this does not draw water in by osmosis, and as a result, it does not cause the swelling up of a cell. Also, they are both large, so they will not leave the cell by diffusion. And finally, they are also compact. That means a lot of alpha glucose is stored in a small space. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.